So hello, everyone. I have a very wonderful friend of mine and special guest, Miss Sandra Pfeiffer from Sandra Pfeiffer Photography, formerly Sandra Lee Photography. Sandy, hi. It's nice to see you today. Hi. Good to see you, too. So thanks for taking some time to talk with me this week. I um, wanted to take the opportunity to chat with you so quickly after the rebranding of your company to kind of get it out there that Sandra Lee Photography has been around for forever, not forever because you're too young to be around forever, but yeah. it's been around a long time and you made the choice to rebrand yourself. So real quickly, um, why don't we start with that? Why don't you talk about how long you've been in the photography business and why you decided to rebrand yourself? Well, I've been in the photography business over 35 years. Um, I actually used to work in a corporate office and did photography on the side for many years. But in 2000, I decided to break away from corporate America and I opened up my own studio in Skipback Village. Um, I decided last year during the pandemic, business was pretty much dead. And it was that way for most photographers who were port portrait photographers. We couldn't have anyone in the studio and whatever. But I also realized that there are like seven, eight other Sandra Lee photographies throughout the country. Really? So many times people would Google me and they would get somebody else. I was getting phone calls for other photographers. I even had one hotel call me and try and book me for some event that this other photographer was trying to set up. And I said, you know what, this is ridiculous. It's time for me to rebrand. So that's when I decided to become Sandra Pfeiffer Photography. It is my name. It, I think I'm the only one in the country, so I'm safe. <laughs> no and one like I'm you. <laughs> super excited about it. It's not totally done, but things are happening. It's it's a slow process, and you just don't realize how many things have to change. But I'm tackling them one at a time. I have a huge list of places online that I have to change, and you know, like Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and the whole thing. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting there. Slowly. I went I went through that pain when I got married and decided to change my name. I, I can everything. You have no idea how you're, I mean, especially when you've been in it for years, your yeah. name is everywhere. It's just it, it's tough. So I give you kudos to do that. Honestly, it, it's a long process. Um, so 35 plus years is how long you've been in the business. What made you get into photography? Well, I have been around photography my whole life. My father was a professional photographer. And as a child, I was always the subject. When he passed away, I was in my early 20s and went into his house, took his camera equipment home and thought, you know, this sounds like it might be a fun thing to do as a hobby. So I started taking classes. I went to Ursinus College. I went on field trips with our uh, professor and I started taking more classes and I fell in love with it. And at one point I decided in order for me to get anywhere with this, I mean, I love taking pictures of landscapes and flowers and things like that. And I have special mm -hmm. lenses to do all of that. Okay. But you know what? I started to think about tackling people and doing portrait work. So I did that. I started actually out doing weddings because I went to work for the guy who did my wedding and okay. I married 39 years. So congratulations. Yeah. So Believe it or not, I went to work for him. So it's actually been like probably 39 years that I've been in business um, because when I worked for him for a while, I, I broke away and started doing it on my own on the side. And then I just went from there. All right. So what is your favorite type of photography then? Do you enjoy weddings? Like what it, I'm sure you love doing it all, but what's your favorite? Um, I would say my favorite is boudoir photography and glamour photography. I love photographing women, helping women see their inner beauty and no matter what age they are. Um, everyone's beautiful. Everyone is. They just have to see it through portraits and portraits are something that last forever. It's something you have. Um, it's a memory. It's, it's something that you know, when you lose relatives, like I know when my, at my wedding, my grandparents, the last picture that was ever taken of them was at my wedding. And shortly afterwards, I think like a year later, my grand, grandfather died. And then a year after that, it was my grandmother. So everybody knew that I had the pictures from my wedding of grandmom and grandpa. And they were like, well, do you have the negatives? And fortunately I did. So I got images made for everybody in the family. So it was really kind of a nice, nice thing. So, yeah. So you're saying negatives now. I'm I'm assuming that everything is now digital, right? It's not yeah. you're not are you, you're not pulling out film and developing it on your own or not anything anymore. Like no, I did. 
I okay. used to, whenever I did a wedding before, in fact, one of the things that was always important when I was shooting weddings, when I started, because you're shooting film, I was using large format cameras. So you're, you're shooting to get it correct in the camera. Today with digital, it's a little bit more forgiving because you can look at the back of the camera and see if it's correct or not. But years ago, you could not do that. You had to make it correct in the, in the um, camera. So I would take maybe 210 pictures at a wedding. And out of those 210 pictures, I would say I probably put 205 at least in the album the, or the proof book that I would give to the bride and groom. Today, I shoot about three to 400 pictures at a wedding because I can. I'm able to do a little bit more. But again, I'm still shooting to get it correct in my camera, not in the lab. So you do weddings now? You still do weddings? I do. I do them on a limited basis. I'm actually doing one this weekend and I'm looking forward to it. So it's been a while since I did a wedding, since we couldn't do anything last right. year. Right. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. But so, whenever, whenever you're doing something like that, like you're preparing weeks in advance and I've been getting ready for this wedding like two weeks ago, I started charging batteries and making sure the cameras are all ready to go. And now, do you go out on your own? Do you have someone that helped you along the way? I have only once had one person assist me, and it was a friend of mine, but most of the time I go out on my own. If the wedding was really big, I might hire an assistant. I did a, a wedding a couple years ago. It was on Valentine's Day, and it was in the middle of a snowstorm. The biggest wedding I ever did, there were 14 people in the wedding party. Wow. I was going to have an assistant, but thank God I didn't because it was like six inches of snow and I, if I'm <laughs> going to be out there in that kind of weather. I don't want someone else being stuck out in it too. And we got some beautiful images. So it was, it was fun shooting in the snow. Now question for you, is there any job that's too small? Not really. I mean, I've had people come to me, um, especially last year when they couldn't get their school pictures done. Oh, Not right. all schools were doing them. So the moms would come to me and they'd say, well, um, can you match the pro the package that they do at the company that um, shoots the school portraits? And I I did match the price, so it was oh, that was more, kind of you. pretty much matched it. But yeah, and I used to do school portraits. I worked for other photography studios doing both um, school pictures and dance schools, and I loved doing that too. So, uh, what's your territory? How far are you willing to travel? Do you want people more so to come to you in your area? Well, it depends on what it is. Most of the time people travel to me if it's for the boudoir or the glamour, even for family portraits. But for weddings or, you know, it depends. Um, sometimes people will pay you to come to their home, wherever it may be. Uh, I have traveled a little internationally. Um, I did a, a, a workshop actually in Santorini, Greece a couple years ago. So I got a lot of great images. Um, one of them is right behind me. It's a model who now works for guests. And she was absolutely phenomenal. We were shooting her in Greece. But I would travel. I love to travel. So if I had a, somebody say to me, well, I'd like to do my wedding down the Bahamas. Okay. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. Or let's go to Italy for a wedding. I would do that. Yes. So boudoir and glamour shots. Do you provide um, the whatever they're wearing and, or do they pick out their own stuff? Do you give them insight to help them? You know, I, you said everyone's beautiful, no matter what, right? There's just they beauty are. in there, but do you give them guidance to build their confidence or um, you just let them work it on their own? Nope. I give them all the confidence they need and they can pretty much, once they're in my studio, I'd say when we're shooting for maybe 15, 20 minutes, all of a sudden they, they're, inner self comes out and it's a lot of fun but I do have makeup artists and hairdressers that I use and they are um, well-known uh, makeup artists they have worked with celebrities and I have one makeup artist I started using even has she said to me she shot or she did the um, three of the last four presidents wow like, wow that's impressive so I but I bring people like that in to do your hair and makeup I suggest clothing for people to wear, especially with boudoir, because they're going to be in lingerie. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a gowns, like sometimes I set, I recommend they go down the street to me and skip back. There's a lady that has secondhand gowns that are like slightly worn and they can go down there and get gowns. I do have a couple that I've purchased from her that I have in a studio for people to use. Um, we did a, a photo shoot at Hotel Fiasol to do the video actually for my new website. 
And when we did that, I borrowed gowns from both Second Sights and Skip Back and Page Six and Skip Skip Back. And, and um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So I believe that um, you've been mentioning in the last couple of weeks that you're doing a promotion that uh, at our networking group, you're, you're looking for somebody. You want to talk about what that is and what you're looking to do? Yes. With this new launch of my, my business, my rebranding, I decided that I would do a 50 women over the age of 40 promotion. And what that is, is I'm offering them um, a, a package deal where they get their hair and makeup done. They get to wear so many outfits. We will have consultations prior to the photo shoot to go over what they can wear, what they should wear, um, what they need to think about, because sometimes you have to worry about what do you do with your nails? Do you, you, you want to make sure your nails are all, you know, just freshly painted. You don't want to, you know, wash your hair before you come in. There's certain things you have to know before you get the photo shoot. Uh, but anyway, that's all part of the package. And then they'll get a couple images out of that. And it's like a $700 value that I do for like three ninety five. dollars Okay, so if they wanted to do this to rebrand themselves for their own business profile or whatever, you're going to give them those those professional pictures to do so. Correct. Yes. Very cool. So as we're wrapping up, I always like to ask, is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't ask you that you'd like us to know? Well, um, perhaps my website. It yes, is Sandra, definitely. My new website is sandrapiferphotography.com. It is not totally 100% done, but it's out there. The, web, the um, video is working. The gallery is all working. The promotion is set up out there. Um, so that was that's important for people to know. Absolutely. Um, and a phone number to contact you if they want to give you a call. Yes, my phone number is 215-234-2290. Do you have an Instagram or Facebook page that they can search you for as well? Um, they can find me on Instagram at Sandra Pfeiffer, and that's P-H-I-F-E-R. Um, on Facebook, it's Sandra Pfeiffer Photography now. And also, I think that's, I'm not sure how Facebook works exactly, but I think it attaches it to your personal page as well. So you can find me, Sandra Pfeiffer, on Facebook. Well, I have seen your work. You have done my headshots for me personally, for my business. Um, I've seen some beautiful, beautiful pictures that you've done of um, our, our networking groups, families, and so forth. And, and I can attest, I mean, just looking at the lovely photos behind you, both two total different types of beauty, one with mom smiling with her child, and then, you know, the, the beautiful woman behind you. So you just captured both of those beautifully. Oh, thank you. So thank you so much for being on the show, guys. Please reach out to Sandy if you need headshots. Ladies, if you are over the age of 40 and you're thinking of rebranding yourself, Sandy will make you feel very comfortable in your own skin. And I highly recommend that you go ahead and you contact her. So Sandy, thank you so much for being my guest. Okay, thank you, Shelby. I appreciate and it. And guys, we'll talk to you next week. Have a great week, everybody. Okay.